Hey everyone, this is David with Streaming Relativity, home of the Astro DNA Observatory and recent victim of the Medusa Nebula. Uh, for those that think owning an observatory is all fun and games, it's it's actually um, for all it's all the good things that it enables, it actually comes with a lot of responsibilities and things don't always work the way that they're supposed to. So last night I was running first light with the AT. 115 EDT. Great, by the way, great images um, came fr came through, but for one reason or another, perhaps it was the cold, um, the finishing sequence did not execute, and so the dome did not find its home position and did not close, nor did the telescope. And I can hear a horrible noise coming out of the dome right now, and we'll turn around and we'll listen. So that's a horrible noise, which means that something is bound up and having a really difficult time. And I gotta get in there and find out what it is. Okay, if I didn't know better, I would say that that is the deck motor having a real difficult time. So, let's take a look at what we got going on here. In my setup and first light testing video for the AT-115 EDT, I mentioned that there were two targets in my first light sequence, and one was uh, M35, a beautiful open cluster, and its stellar neighbors, which I think that image came out really nicely, and I shared it in an earlier video. But I also mentioned there was a tougher target, a very dim planetary nebula called the Medusa Nebula. So, you know, funny enough, I knew something was going to go wrong with this second half of the sequence. And I guess I'm a little superstitious. I guess we all maybe are a little, a, a bit superstitious, but to wake up the next day and see the mount frozen in place, screaming because it could not move, you know, <laughs> yeah, there's a technical reason why this happened and we're going to cover it. But what a cosmic coincidence. My rig was literally petrified to stone by the mythical Gorgon Medusa. You have to love it. It doesn't get any better than this. And, and that gives a story for this image, at least. And now, obviously, you know, these events, they did affect the data for my for this target. And I was actually going to trash it, you know, just trash all of it. But I decided to give it a try, you know, because when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And if you like that can-do attitude and you're into astronomy and all things astrophotography, go ahead and subscribe. It helps me to know that you are enjoying this content and it, and it just keeps me going. Okay, so this image is um, done in the HOO palette. And I was forced uh, to an HOO palette because I had absolutely no sulfur data or luminance data that could be used in the composition. And in fact, all of the images that I'm, uh, that I'm sharing here were built from a total of 80 minutes of data, and most of it is uh, hydrogen alpha. You know, given the focus issues and the lack of data, this is actually not a horrible uh, capture. And uh, But when you zoom in a bit, it, it really starts to break down. Um, so keeping this zoomed out, uh, is a best, it, it, you know, is, is the best bet, but I, I tend to be more of a naturalist with respect to my data and my imaging. Um, I guess that's a different way of saying I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to processing, but you know, uh, there are techniques that can be used and I will, will draw upon from time to time. And, uh, I use the HDR transformation tool in PixInsight and I just used the default settings um, and I applied it to the starless uh, version of this image. And, um, and certainly, you know, you can see there's a different level of detail in that planetary nebula. But I felt like I was losing some of the volume that I get out of the straight HOO uh, implementation. So I decided to take the two images and merge them in GIMP. And the resulting image I found to be this in-between shot. Uh, most to my liking, and and this is the image that I'll use to tell the story of the Medusa Nebula. 
Okay. The Medusa Nebula is located in the constellation of Gemini, which is the constellation of focus for January of 2024, at least on, on the Astro DNA Observatory channel. And uh, the nebula can be found south, uh, really the southeastern border of the constellation. And I like to think of it as a ball that's balanced on the top of uh, Canis Minor's head. Canis Minor being a constellation, one of the t two dog constellations that are following Orion. This is a very faint planetary nebula, and uh, in fact, it wasn't discovered until 1955, and initially it was believed to be a supernova remnant, um, and it was believed to be a supernova remnant all the way into the 80s. And uh, there's a big difference between a planetary and a supernova. Uh, but we'll, in fact, we'll, we'll look at uh, an actual supernova remnant in Gemini before the end of the month. But for now, let's talk about this planetary nebula. And, and although this is a very faint nebula, it's, it's actually magnitude 16 or 1599. Um, uh, it's actually pretty large. And if you notice that, you know, there's this central concentrated region of nebula, but then there you see whispers of nebula that go well beyond that region. So um, planetaries are, are a type of emission nebula, and they're powered by a dying central star, which is this little blue dot right here. So this is a white dwarf, which was once a red giant that gently shed all of its outer layers, which we see here as nebulosity, which is the destiny of our own sun in about 5 billion years. So for that reason, Medusa, the Medusa Nebula, is considered an omen of dramatic change. And I suppose there's nothing more dramatic than the end of a star's life. And maybe this is why my rig was was petrified. <laughs> anyway, this is not a bad image considering the uh, lack of data and the circumstances of the se uh, of the session. And uh, if you're uh, interested in a challenging target and you have the nerve to take on uh, the mythological uh, Gorgon, go ahead. Give uh, give this planetary nebula a shot, the Medusa Nebula in Gemini. Okay, folks, I'm going to call that a wrap. I hope everybody enjoyed uh, the, the image and enjoyed the, the lore behind uh, Medusa. Um, and if anybody is worried about the mount, don't worry. The mount is fine. We had a, a, just a, a 1 16th counterclockwise adjustment to the deck mesh, and, uh, and that noise is gone. So, but thanks so much for caring, and, and thanks so much for subscribing. I've got a ton of really cool videos coming up in the next few weeks, and you really don't want to miss them. So with that, I will see everyone on the next video.